Today we're going to be making the uh, eccentrics uh, for the uh, forward and reverse. These two, which is that one and that one, are in fact coupled together um, using the same centre line, obviously, by a couple of uh, two millimetre dowel pins, and then it's held to the crank um, by these couple of uh, little screws, little grub screws. Um, so anyway, the first um, thing I'm going to make is, I'll make this one first because that's the easiest one and then we'll uh, have a look at this one and uh, work out how we're going to do that one. So, do this one first, nice and simple, 24mm uh, diameter with a groove in it and then I'll take it out and uh, drill the hole. To make these, I've got a bit of uh, 25 millimeter hot rolled. Um, I would have preferred a bit of cold rolled, but <laughs> that's, that's the biggest bit of cold rolled I've got, which is enough to get this one out of, but not this one as well. So I'll keep it all the same and uh, make it out of this bit of hot rolled. Uh, Steel. That's what it calls up. It calls up mild steel, so that that's what I'm going to use. All right, just going to give this a bit of clean up. Start with get rid of the mill scale. cleaned up. Uh, I've got the DRO set on the face. Now I can turn that down to my dimension which is 24 millimeters diameter and 8 millimeters in. All right we're about uh, yeah 25 so we need a millimeter off of that. Right, I need to make a, a three millimeter groove in there now, um, central, um, which I'm going to make with the parting tool. Um, so I've got a, it's got to finish uh, two millimeters deep. So I'll do the two millimeter cut because it's got to be three millimeter wide. The parting tool is only two millimeters, so I'll do the two millimeter cut and then I'll trim it back to one millimeter. So, well, in fact, I'll go central, um, two millimeter cut, and then half a millimeter either side. Well, according to my dials, that should now be uh, 20 millimeters in there, but we'll see. Sorry, uh, 20. What have I taken off? There's 22. I've taken off two millimeters. Oh, I need to take off four millimeters, two millimeters either side. So I need four millimeters off the diameter. So all right, that's exactly 20, 20.6. So. If I now move half a millimetre this way, half a millimetre the other way, that will give me my three millimetre groove. So back down to two and a half millimetres on the DRO.
I'm going to part that off at uh, 9 millimeters so I can put it back in and just clean it up. coming. Got too greedy didn't I? Got too greedy. Never mind. Oh, broke the bit in case you're wondering. Right, I'm gonna um, cut that off on the bandsaw like I should have done in the first place. set up in the mill when I do the hole but I'm gonna I'm gonna cut the other eccentric first <coughs> Right, just uh, facing off this one now which is this one the out, the outside one um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna cut this 24 mil piece which matches this piece um, I'm going to leave, leave it long obviously I'm going to take it over to the mill drill the hole through make up a, a 10 millimeter mandrel and then put it back in the lathe and turn this piece that saves me um, marking it out first and turning an eccentric piece and offsetting with the four jaw it just uh, makes life a little easier over <coughs> right on my money right same again go over three millimeters back half forward to half I'm doing initially is uh, is this so uh, there we go just put in this three millimeter grooving here now so I'm going to come over with the edge of the cutter which is now on the face I'm going to come over three millimeters cut the depth of the groove and then I'm going to go back half a millimeter and forward half a millimeter to give myself a three millimeter groove chamfers on there <coughs> I'm just 
going to mark over now the, the full width including the piece that we've got to put back in and turn down. I'm just going to mark over now which is this piece to include the, the whole width. I'll put a mark on, I'll take it out, cut it in the bandsaw and put it back in, just clean it up and then we can get on drilling the holes. Right, set the DRO. We've got to come over six, nine, and five is fourteen. Fourteen millimeters is the cut off. Just got a couple of parallels off the face of the chuck just to put that back in just to um, get it as flat as I can. of our uh, eccentrics unfinished of course um, this one will eventually go on there and mount something like that but anyway we've got to get over to the mill and set a little jig up now so that we can drill the holes all the way through the 10 millimeter holes right I'm gonna get that set up now and I'm gonna put a little stop either side so that will give me a three point position <coughs> for when I come to put this one in when I put that one in it'll go into exactly the same position so it doesn't look like I'm talking a load of old gobbledygook. Um, what I need to do is come to this uh, this uh, centre of this 10 millimetre hole is actually 3.5 millimetres off centre, and the same on this one. That's 3.5. There's the centre. That's 3.5 millimeter off center, uh, which is also the same line for the pins. So what I'm going to do now is to mark out this hole. Um, I think I'm going to do them under size initially, and then maybe put the pins in and uh, drill them both when these pins are through. Maybe I'll uh, I'll drill I'll final drill them both with with the pins in position. So I'll drill them under size for now. I'll drill them nine millimeters for now, and then drill them out to ten millimeters later. Right, I'm now centre three and a half millimeters back, and I'm going to drill my hole. I'm going to take this back over to the lathe um, 
make a 9mm mandrel use this as the centre to turn this part of the uh, eccentric <laughs> Right, the mandrel set up. Now we can turn this down, fingers crossed. Right, that's worked out real nice. Really pleased with that. Right, let's just take that off there. There we go. That's worked out really nice. Really pleased with that. Get that cleaned up. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this down a little bit more and I'm going to use this as a mandrel to align them. So when I now put them back in the vise, I want something to go through there to align them to their um, correct positions so that I can then drill out the pins and then do a final drill on that hole. <coughs> Take it over to the mill and uh, I can line them up now ready to uh, drill the ends out right what I'm going to do now is use the mandrel to put through both of these to align them it's positioned in that direction okay so now I've got the coordinates and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get drill directly through the mandrel through the pieces all the way through I really ought to try and find some sort of way of clamping that I've got a two millimeter hole now all the way through um, what I need to do now is just make up a pin to put in there before I drill the other side so that that's held then by two points and that won't turn. Alright, I've got a little brass pin now that I've made up just to position in there. So now that's locked off in that position I can move over, drill the other th hole through, make two pins for either side and drive them in. Now I've got a pin in this side, a pin central. I can move the table six and a half millimeters the other way and put the next hole in. going to release that. I've still got the position on the X and Y just so I can deburr it. Right, so what I want to do then, 
put these two pieces together put these pins in <coughs> like so what I need to do is cut the pins off now Right, let's cut the pins. The pins are cut off. And what I need to do is to clamp these two pieces together and squash the pins down. Right, I've got those clamped together. And what I'm going to do is put the pin in the vise and, and squash the pin. Right, that's the pin squashed a bit now. So now I'll just slacken that clamp off, move it over the other side. So I can do the same with the other side. Right, they're now squashed down a little bit like rivets really, but it's also would have squashed the core. So I'm just going to tighten up on both of those. <coughs> Squash them a little bit more. That's it. Right, they're squashed down, there's no gap in the middle, everything's uh, how it should be. Oops. The pin, the mandrel pin, still fits nicely in there, which is good. So now, I can put that back in. Put that back into the vise now. Right, I've still got the DRO zeroed. I can put that back in just to relocate my position. Right, that's the position relocated now. So what I need to do now, swap this bit out for a 9.8 and then I'll ream the last little bit up to 10 millimeters. All right, let's ream that out to 10 millimeters. Right, telling me 10 millimeter reamed. I'll just get that deburred, cleaned up, and then I'll be back. And that's the uh, that's the finished sheave. Obviously, that makes up the uh, the uh, full eccentric. There's the sheave in there, and then you've got the uh, sleeves come around the outside um, on, onto the crank. Um, I've just got to put these um, holes in holes in for these grub screws. But I'm not going to put them in until I fit it onto the crank because I want to be able to just position it on the crank and just drill through and put a dimple in the crank um, before I put the threads in. You'll, you'll see what I mean. I'll, I'll show that later on. That, that'll be in the final assembly, but as far as I'm concerned now, that's finished. Right. There we have it.
That's all folks. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button. I would also appreciate it if you would click the subscribe button because that will uh, enable me to grow the channel so that I can keep making these videos. Please leave a comment or a question. I do read all of the comments and reply to as many as I can. Thanks for watching.